Okay, Coach. Well, we are about a $50 cab ride away from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go, and it should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They run with Ezekiel Elliott, last year's NFL rushing leader, and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 14 yards, good for a Cowboy first down. For Zeke, what a first three years he's had in the NFL. Last year, his second rushing title, 1,434 yards. Not as many as 1,631 that he had as a rookie, but still his yards per game average was the best in the National Football League. They'll run with Elliott, and he'll take it across midfield down into Jet territory. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. I'm going back to you. From just shy of midfield, Prescott throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The man with over 1,000 catches, Jason Witten, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Dak finding his tight end, Witten, and the Cowboys have a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 24-yard line. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give them 18 on that one, and it's a Dallas first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-oh, -oh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Out of the gun, here's 
Prescott. Got his man there complete to Gallup. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. Prescott from the gun. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Blowing that play up was Henry Anderson. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Of course, the door for Meyer was opened after a little bit of a surprise move. The Cowboys letting go of Dan Bailey last year. Yeah, Maher took over in the preseason. He's from Nebraska via the Canadian Football League where he kicked for four years. And I saw him personally make two game-winning field goals last season against Detroit and in Atlanta. After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Back onto the field comes the New York Jets offense. It's an offense that has struggled this year. We mentioned earlier in week five, they lost to Philly 31-6. And remember, that was coming off their open week. And fans were hoping the Jets could right the ship, but they've really struggled in the passing game without Sam Darnold. Le'Veon Bell in the backfield, he's kind of done his thing, but the offense has not been able to produce touchdowns. In fact, they have more defensive and special team touchdowns with three than offensive touchdowns with two. Upcoming schedule, they'll be home against Dallas and then home against New England before heading to Jacksonville. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Darnold now to throw. He's got Herndon. He's tied in. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And by the end of last year, Herndon had solidified himself as the primary tight end for New York. And overall, second leading receiver in 2018 on the team behind Robbie Anderson. In fact, his 39 catches, most among rookie tight ends in the league a season ago. Darnold finding Anderson here. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the second half. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now they'll try to sweep with Bell. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, I thought he was a big-time player, great potential, but I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back, but now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. He's come a long way since his time at Georgia Tech. What did he run at Tech? He ran hitches and, and go routes, essentially. Yeah. I mean, but he ran them really well. He averaged well over 20 yards a catch while he was there. And he still creates downfield in the NFL. That big body and that willingness to go catch the football. He's pretty impressive. And his friends call him Bebe, the nickname his uncle gave him back in the day. A good lane to run there for Bell as he'll get about seven on first down. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. 
Let's go one more. From the 27, Darnold. This is Bell on the dump off. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Seven yards there and a first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. And he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. <laughs> When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. 54 miles. Here we, here we go, D. Here, here I come again. Here I come again. Here I come again. Right On second down, it's Bell. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. It, Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. The shotgun snap for Darnold. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. We, and you talk to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. That is going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Off the edge, it's Tyrone Crawford with a sack. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Now a draw play. This is Bell. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Jeff Heath, the one to bring him down. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let him know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. So on fourth down, Adam Gase turns to the field goal unit. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. Ficken's kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on that. I was. Partner. I was. It sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Dallas Cowboys, a team that started 3-0, now 3-2 after a pair of losses in week 4-5. and five. And as their offense comes back out here, and you think about who they beat in those first three weeks the Giants Redskins and Dolphins not exactly a gauntlet so now they're at three and two and tied atop the NFC East with a Philadelphia team that all of a sudden it... rush coming and he's taken down Jordan Jenkins coming in hard there on the blitz and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage Brandon if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that 
I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott sliding out of the pocket. He can run for it, and he will. These two teams all tied after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Cowboys in possession. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Now Bell hit. He lost the football. It's picked up by the Cowboys. And they take over already five yards deep into the red zone at the 15-yard line. They may have the edge on the scoreboard, but that hasn't made them pass it, has it? I mean, they've they dialed up a pretty good run blitz there. And, and, and Brandon, you know that all blitzes aren't just designed to get to the quarterback and the passer. Sometimes you're just trying to take away every gap, every hole that might be created in a running game. And they did it to perfection and caused a fumble there. Took away the gaps, took away the holes, took away the football. He was able to escape momentarily in the backfield, but you could just kind of tell that wasn't going anywhere. You know, in the film session, he'll get a minus for not getting him on the ground by himself. But what the coach is really going to analyze, how fast did his teammates get there to help him? If one guy slows him up, everyone else better be there. And that's what they got on that play. Throw complete to Herndon. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. On fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. Back deep for the Cowboys, Tavon Austin. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special... And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Brandon Copeland. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Like the footwork back there. I thought you did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end, oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, winds up getting buried for the loss. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. This is Elliott. He's able to get four back on the run, but now they'll have to find something here on third and about 14. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Rolling to his right. He may try and run for this. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Able to find a lot of empty space there. Picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. Under the category of obvious, you hate giving up a first down on third and long. And somehow, he finds his way downfield and picks it up. 
Yeah, if you look at the coverage defensively, oh, this is great, but no one accounted for him at the quarterback spot. At some point, you actually have to tackle him and get him on the ground short of the first down marker. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Well, the defensive guys won't be real happy because there won't be a sack on this play because he did get back to the line of scrimmage, but what a job they did overall. Hemmed him in and gave him nowhere to go with the football. On second down, Elliott, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that'll make it third and 13. Now Prescott. And that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The New York set to take the field. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. From the 22, here's second and eight. To throw is Darnold. Herndon's got it complete. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now it's Darnold. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for. But it'll be second down. He's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw at any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Come on out here. Come get some. Come get some. Come on here. Come get some. It's up. He don't want it. It's up. They'll run it with Bell. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. I'm here all day. On third down, here's Bell. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys' rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line, linebackers really work well together. Now Edwards to kick as he sends it away. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't turn guess. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now you got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. Here we go. Four and eight. 57 to I'm going to run 
Tenth carry now for Elliott. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Well, that point was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Play action now, Prescott. And this is going to be incomplete. comes the Cowboys punter as he's on here to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Jets will take over first and 10. The New York set to take the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. A gain of three, second down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Watch the run, watch the run. From the 24, Darnold caught here by Griffin. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 13, it's a first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. Here's Darnold. Goes underneath for Bell. It's a four-yard pickup, and it's a second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. On the counter, here's Bell. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards there and a first down. Bell, of course, three-time 1,000-yard rusher. Sat out 2018, but you look back to 2017, a tick under 1,300 yards and almost 700 more receiving. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Darnold from the gun. On the catch, it's Crowder. That throw good for four. It's second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. 54, right there, right there. 54, Mike. Go, go, go. Throwing again on second down. Darnold, this one caught by Crowder. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside and break it inside. Really well run route. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and ten. 
Back to throw, Darnold. That's complete. It's Bell. Call it a gain of five. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots in the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three, and this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over, and it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Prescott to throw it. And an alley to run. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. The Cowboys on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This time it's third and three. Prescott now from the 50. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. So we've reached halftime in a low scoring affair. Just a pair of field goals. 3-3 is our score. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, second half ready to roll. Two field goals, a combined output in half number one. Could be first touchdown wins. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that will give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. The second half starts with a carry by Bell. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. He's had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. And he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. They'll try and run for it with Bell. And the lane closes quickly for Bell, and he did not make it. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And there's a work of art right there. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. 
work on positioning the football and helping their team. They start on the ground with Elliott. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Sometimes you get just a little overeager defensively when you've got people backed up because the mentality is to attack, take the ball away, or at worst, just keep them backed up there for your own offense. They actually use their aggressiveness against them on that one and hit them big. Absolutely. Had them pinned on the two. Not anymore. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Check 53 is left. Get that quarterback. On second down now, it's Elliott. And he roams across the 20 to the 24-yard line. It appears he'll be a few inches short, so nine yards on the gain officially, and it'll be third down. The Jets will bring in a nickel set here as they try to stop this third down. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Elliott. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. From the 38, Prescott got an open man, the tight end, Jarwin. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. On first and 10, Prescott. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, there in coverage. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball. And we see yet another Aaron throw as a result. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. We see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. On third down, it's Prescott. Cooper's got it. And now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. The first down run with Bell is he'll get about six there. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Here we go. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. And that is incomplete. 
Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 16 in the Dallas first down. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the RPO, Prescott's going to keep it himself. He's going to find Gallup here complete. A gain of six there on first. With Cole Beasley now in Buffalo, you think that might open up some more targets for Michael Gallup. Last year as a rookie, 33 catches for the Dallas Cowboys. On second down and four. Prescott got his man there complete to Gallup. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Prescott now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Here's Elliott. And he'll take it across midfield down into Jet territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Now Dak on the option left. Shedding the tackle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. A 20th carry here for Elliott, and he'll get this one down to about the 27. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. And that is incomplete. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first one. This from 44 yards out now. Marr able to put this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So a good kick there. They put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it.
After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. Airing one out for Crowder. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. He was looking for Jamison Crowder there. And that'll bring up second down. You know they wanted. You know they expected. They needed him to be sharp coming out after the half. Unfortunately, he's missed his first three throws. I wonder if he got out late and missed his warm-up time. The whole team did come out a little bit later than usual. I don't know. Maybe there's something to that. Must have been a heck of a halftime speech. And yeah, maybe just trying to rally the troops back from this deficit. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Throwing here on third down. Darnold, he's got Herndon. His tight end. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Then we got to give a little tip of the cap for the defense there. Zone coverage, locked it in tight, made it really difficult because they tried the crossing route against it, and it worked for a completion, but you have to know where the sticks are on third down. Didn't get beyond them, no pickup. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. Switch. Switch. A first down carry by Elliott. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now a carry for the big fella. This is Jameis Olawale. And the ball is knocked out, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And they'll have great field position here as the ball will be at the 15-yard line. So following the fumble recovery, here's Darnold. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Darnold. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. The sack by Robert Quinn. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, Took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. 
Ficken's kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. So back even at six apiece as the kick's away. This will be fielded at the six. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? When they only gave up the field goal, and they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Please, please. To throw again on second down. Prescott, this to Jarwin. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Prescott from the gun. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The safety, Jamal Adams, able to break that one up. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Steps away to his left. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? Eva, make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Check Mike 54. Mike 54. You ain't doing nothing today. You ain't doing nothing. The shotgun snap for Darnold. He gets it to Thomas. Thomas barreling ahead, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Darnold now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Now Bell. And he's got this one across midfield into Cowboy territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. 
I know every time we watch Le'Veon Bell play, we think about him making people miss the hesitation move. But you remember, he came out of Michigan State as a bruiser and a thumper, and he still has those capabilities. At 225 pounds, an underrated part of his game. From the 45 on second down, Darnold and Thomas has it. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 31-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. 10 yards is the pickup, good enough for a jet first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up the block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Now a first down carry by Bell. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Out of the shotgun. Here's Darnold. And that's off the mark. Incomplete. Cheetah Bay Awuzie there to make the play in coverage. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. On third down, Bell. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter tie. Fickens' kick is good. And they take the lead here as it's now 9-6. to six. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Jason Witten, the intended target. And it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Last year, Dak Prescott had three fourth-quarter comebacks, and he's in search of another one right now. Now a man open down the middle of the field, and he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards the pick up there. First down, Dallas. Here we go. Four and eight. Check 53. 26. They're running, man. 26. 
They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Brandon Copeland able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. You think back to last year, Dak Prescott was sacked 56 times, second most in the league behind Deshaun Watson of the Texans. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Now Prescott stepping up. He's going to keep it. Excellent work that time to get free and for his exploits. He's going to be left with just a third and three. I thought they were going to sack him there like they did on first down. Great coverage, but he found a way to move with his legs. Yeah, his ability to take off. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra. Really helps him on third down. Makes it manageable now. Looking to throw. Prescott. He's got his target. It's Cobb. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And that's Elliott, complete. Oh, no, he lost the football. And fortunately for him, he's able to get it back. But it will be a loss on the play. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. Looking to throw again on second down. Prescott. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Good starting position for the Jets as they come up first and 10. After the interception, here's Darnold. And his throw is incomplete. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. Second down and 10, Darnold. That one complete to Anderson. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. Darnold from the gun. Caught here by Bell. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. First down. First and 10 at the 42 yard line. We got this. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Bell. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Here we go, Now Darnold. This will be caught by Brown. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop. 150 left in the football game. It's Bell, and he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. 
The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. And Darnold wants to throw the football. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Jets will extend their lead. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just haven't been able to punch it in until that point. Important extra point up and through. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded at the six. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So Dak Prescott in the offense. Down by 10, a minute 37 remaining. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. So first and 10 now from the 30. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Throwing again on second and 10. Prescott, he's got a man complete. It's Amari Cooper. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think the last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They had Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swain, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out there and doing his thing again. Caught by Cobb. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets 19. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Prescott to throw it. And this is caught. It's Cooper. And out of bounds, all the way down at the three. Fifteen more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. They come out here in the eye. Let's go, They'll try to run it in with Elliott. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle with a clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope. Problem for them, they needed that score with a little more time left on the clock. I think 
just too little too late now. I would agree with that, and we're programmed never to say never, but in this case, we're asking a lot for them to even think they have a chance. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So now with little time remaining, they'll have this and maybe one more play. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now... This game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Darnold is going to take a knee, and that should just about do it. So it's a victory here for the New York Jets, and I think you'd have to label this an upset. Yes, they were at home, but still an upset. They got the job done. Yeah, even being at home was not enough for people to think they were going to pull this one off. But give them credit for playing not just a smart football game, but one where they were going to be physical about the whole thing. They put up their fists and said, let's fight, and showed their crowd that they were into this one. And then that's the thing. The crowd responded. They were really good in this game. Yeah, they were not going to be pushed around. They were not going to be intimidated. They refused to back down and came away with a victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the JETS as we say so long from MetLife Stadium.